How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today, I wanted to go over a topic of how to make your RV last as long as you possibly can. What are five things that we can do to make your RV last longer? Lately, we've been having a lot of rain, and so there were some areas that I wanted to check to see if water was getting into the RV, even though we're not seeing evidence of it, but I don't want to have any of that delamination, some of those things that you have to look a little bit closer to see if you're having a problem. So this is going to be number one. I climbed up on the roof, and as I usually do, I check the seals on the roof. You always want to check the seals. You don't want any water getting into a crack or somewhere where that sealant has, has lost its seal and you need to reapply sealant so that you don't have water getting in there. But this is a key point of where you might see some water getting in where you don't visually see it at first. So if you see that trim along the side of the RV, we replaced this on our last RV and I'm going to do the same on this. Is that trim insert on that metal piece of trim that bridges it between the roof and the sidewall allows that water to run down the edge of it over the, the trim piece and it, there's really nothing that stops it from running inside that track because that trim insert just allows that water just to be led right in there. So as you pull that insert off you can see that there's quite a bit of moisture back inside of there. So we had fixed this on the last RV and what I plan to do on this is I'm gonna pull those screws out just ever so slightly, put a little bit of caulking behind there, put it back in so that way each one of those screws is sealed behind there. And then I'm gonna get that other trim insert that has more of a groove in there. So it overlaps on the outside, on the top, and the bottom creating a better seal. So as that water hits it, it would have to go up and over in a U shape on the top and on the bottom, it already sheds it off so that we can get that water to go out rather than to go inside of that trim piece. Because what happens is that water just runs along there, it's gonna find a screw hole, it's gonna rust it out, it's gonna find a way in and it's gonna start to delaminate your RV. And that is gonna shorten the life of your RV, something you want to stop. This is something that I can do that helps a problem area on the RV and this is really kind of industry wide. A a lot of different manufacturers use this type of construction between the roof and the sidewall. There's really not a whole lot of attention given to there, but I think it's a very vulnerable area. I wish this is something that would change in the RV construction, but I don't, I don't see this changing anytime soon. It's going to continue this way, but this is what we can do to fix it. So this is going on my to-do list before winter really sets in. Number two on our list is going to be don't stress the weak points. So find those weak points that are in your RV. For instance, uh, we have our galley tank that is connected to a very thin piece of metal that's connected to the frame and then it comes down. And what you do is you pull that handle to allow that tank to open so that we can drain that tank, then we close it. You're basically taking that piece of metal and you're just flexing it a little bit every time. So what I do is I know that that is a weak point. I do not want to stress out that weak point. And so when I'm closing that valve, I'll put my hand behind it or I'll just squeeze the that handle and that piece of metal so that I'm not putting stress against that joint causing it to move. Uh, when I'm opening it, I'll just grab it with my hand and I'll pull the handle. Anything I can do to not create that flexing motion to cause a break in the metal. This is just a really simple area, but we also think about that in other areas of the RV like shelving. These RVs are built, number one, to be light and number two, to have inexpensive materials put into that. So when you look at the shelves inside of the RV, it is a very thin piece of plywood that's on there, more like a, a Luon kind of a thing. And so when you're trying to place cans or grocery items or larger items on these shelves, you wanna think about is that a weak point that I am stressing? So for instance, we have a cabinet down here that we keep some of our food. Uh, we keep the heavier cans and we'll double stack cans that are on the floor, but we try and keep that shelf that we know is really thin and we're not gonna overload that because we know on drive days, you're gonna have movement in here as you're going down the road and we don't wanna cause extra stress and then something else for us to fix inside of the RV damaging the cabinets. This idea follows me throughout the entire RV as I use it and there's things that I do that I don't even realize I do it until somebody asks, hey, why do you do that that way? Like when we support the wheels when we're auto leveling the RV, we wanna make sure we're not lifting those wheels, causing them to spin uh, because that puts extra stress on those stabilizers and the auto leveling system if it's not properly supported. So we don't wanna add extra stress. So 
find those areas in your RV or just think about your RV in a way that you don't want to add extra stress to the weak points in your RV. It's just as simple as that. Moving on to number three is protecting the outside of your RV. You don't want your RV to look like it's just been sitting in the weather forever, faded by the sun and showing its age much quicker than it, it should be. So uh, we want to protect the walls. Uh, there's different ends of the spectrum of things you can do to protect it. So on one end of the extreme, you can do a ceramic coating on the RV. Uh, there's graphene. There's a lot of technology coming in that area where you can apply it yourself to give a layer of protection on the RV. If you're looking for not that involved because that is very involved for how you're going to apply it, this is something that we have used that uh, really holds up well and this is extremely easy to use. I would say that this should be the minimum of what you would put on the, the outside of the RV. This is the Turtle Wax Ice Seal and Shine. Uh, it has UV blockers, it has hydrophobic properties, it's very slick to the touch on the RV, and it does really well for resistance against chemicals. So all those chemicals that your RV is gonna come up against is gonna be fine. It works on full body paint, it works on gel coat, it works on the vinyl stickers, it's really easy to apply. You spray it on in a, a small area, you wipe it down with one rag, you have a dry rag that you come back, and you wipe it off. You're not really uh, buffing something in and buffing something off. This is just really easy to give you a layer of protection on the RV that's gonna protect you with UV protection in there. That was a lot of protection. <laughs> I found this product from other guys like Pan the Organizer that test products like this. Uh, they put it through the gamut and try and see how much it can handle. And this one tests out really well with it being so easy to put on and really inexpensive. It's kind of the minimum of what you should have as protection on your vehicle. Now that brings us to the last two areas in the RV that I really pay attention to. Number one is going to be the slides. I pay a lot of attention to the slides, how they go in and out. I listen to them, I watch them, I observe it every time it goes in and out, and I do the maintenance on the slide twice as often as I as they actually recommend. I wanna have that, that slide clean, I wanna have it oiled up, I don't wanna have a, a lot of buildup and resistance. So I do everything that I can to make sure that I'm alleviating resistance. Uh, this is a large slide for a, a Schwinn Tech slide mechanism, and so we want to do everything that we can to preserve the, the life of that system. I don't know how else to say it. We do the maintenance on that all the time. We're doing it twice, more than twice as often as they would probably recommend. The other thing that I want to have working properly is our last one, and that is the tires. I keep uh, a close eye on the tires. I visually inspect them all the time. Uh, just taking a quick glance on them every time before we tow. Um, I check the tire pressure. Having a tire pressure monitor system helps in that. You turn it on, you see what the pressure is, you see what the temperature is while you're driving, and uh, keeping a close eye on that is very important to me. In the visual inspection, I like to look at the tread, see how it's wearing, to let me know if I have any other additional problem with the axle or the way that it's going down the road. We have a, a whole video that talks about tires and tire maintenance, but that is something that is really high on my top five list of things that I do to make sure the RV is gonna last as long as it can because if you blow a tire, there's significant damage that can happen to the outside of your RV and or the, the axles. There's just a lot that can go wrong there. And anything I can do in preventative maintenance to stop that from happening, I'm absolutely going to do that. So if you wanted to check the links down in the description, I'll put links to the videos that talk about some of these things in more detail in those videos. I'll put links down in the description to the products that we talked about today, like the, the ice seal and shine, those trim inserts to, to keep water from getting into the, the walls and the roof area up there. Um, I'll put links to the description to everything that we talk about down below. So I think that's going to do it for today. I hope this video helps you guys out. I hope it helps you extend the life of your RV and to think about your RV in a way that you can extend the life and use it much, much longer. So that's going to do it for today. Thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. If you want to see more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you next video.